Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. These Sephora videos are some of my favorite to film and some of my favorite to watch so I'm really excited. This video is going to be my recommendations and then I think I'm going to do a separate video with what's in my cart because there's so many products it would be like an hour long I think to do both in one video. So hopefully fingers crossed you're going to get two videos from me on this and then maybe we'll even come back and do a haul. I'm actually thinking about shopping the holiday savings event in store myself personally because this is the first time that I've been rouge in like maybe the first time ever because I bought my Dyson and it knocked me into rouge. So I've never really been able to participate on the first day so I'm kind of like excited and it happens to fall on a Friday so I feel like I can make time to go in store. Maybe I could even vlog it or something. I don't know. I wish I had more time in a day. <laughs> So I have so many recommendations in front of me and as always I have them written down on a sheet so that I don't forget anything. But I do have a couple disclaimers and I hate disclaimers but I just feel like making them because I'm a human being. So first up, I'm really insecure today on camera. I always am insecure about like having a bigger face in general but now I have a cold coming, like something's happening and my lymph nodes are a little bit swollen so my face is like even bigger and like my tonsils are a little bit Bit red so like my face is looking even puffier than usual so I'm feeling a little insecure and then my second disclaimer is just always you guys these videos are just to help you if you guys are shopping not to be like you need this in your life go buy it right now like I'm selling you something no I really believe that there are affordable alternatives for a lot of products available at Sephora but I personally have been shopping Sephora a lot more recently. I've been treating myself. I think that makeup makes me, like, it heals me. It makes me feel better. So I have been spending a lot of my own money at Sephora, but definitely there's alternatives out there. So I just don't feel like you need to drop a $500 to $1,000 at Sephora. I feel like I see that a lot these days and, like, it's not necessary, but I still, I do love a good Sephora haul. So... Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> I'm trying out glitter glosses on my Instagram, so if you guys are wondering what I have on my lips, it's the Anastasia Diamond Lip Gloss. Um, I just wanted to let you know because I rarely kind of wear a glittery lip gloss, but for whatever reason, I'm into it right now and I'm already kind of like into the holiday spirit. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that too in case you guys were wondering and hopefully I haven't worn this in a while, but hopefully it doesn't do anything weird and stringy. First up, if you have your sights set on any perfume, now's the time to pick up perfume from Sephora. And I just have my tried and true available at Sephora. It's the Kayali Vanilla 28. Now there are going to be some fragrances there that are available at other places that you might get better discounts on, but I personally haven't seen anything better than 20%, I don't think, on Kayali. So this is just one of my most complimented perfumes. I always get questions about it. It lasts really long on me. So this one for sure is a top recommendation. I do think they come in different sizes too if you wanted to try a smaller size and get that discount. I'm gonna try to put everything behind me as I talk about it. Um, one that I don't have in front of me, I actually keep it in my bedroom at all times, is the Dyson Airwrap. I'm loving my Dyson. I'm not gonna go into super detail about it because it is a mega purchase for sure, but if you were dead set on it and you can get it during the sale, by all means do it. I wasn't lucky enough to get it at a sale price, so I paid full price for it. I'm loving it. It's helping me keep my hair healthier. I'm using less heat on it. I'm actually loving the brush like smoothing attachment, which I didn't think that that would be my fave, but it is. So definitely, of course, the huge large ticket items now's the time. So this is in no like particular order. It's a little bit disorganized, but I am just picking them up in front of my table in front of me. So I have my favorite setting spray and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. For whatever reason, I keep purchasing the mini size and not committing to the full size. Don't know why, but I'm going to do it again because there's a duo of the minis and it is a discounted price and that's available for the holidays. So I'm probably going to be adding that to my cart. This and the Urban Decay All Nighter are my tried and true, but I've been going for this one more often. So this is my number one. I have a couple foundation recommendations and they're kind of throwbacks because there have been a lot of new complexion products that I've been trying and loving, but I have also like rediscovered some old favorites. So 
a really tried and true foundation for me is the Urban Decay Stay Naked. I don't feel like I hear a lot of people talk about this and I'm not sure. You guys will have to let me know if you have a different experience with it. But for me, it's the ultimate like go-to foundation. I know it's going to perform on my skin with pretty much any primer that I use. It's compatible with them. Um, it also is, I would say, a little bit more full coverage than natural. Like, it's a really good coverage on me, but it doesn't look fake. It's certainly not cakey, but it's also not watery. It's like the perfect in-between foundation consistency. Mine is super old. I shook it up for this video, but it's really like down to here. And I have the shade 20NN. It's also a great mixer. It plays well with other products, so if you haven't tried it, I would definitely recommend trying this. I do have a dry to normal skin type if you guys are new here. Um, it definitely goes more on the dry side during the winter and then more normal in the summer. And then I have another one. This one I feel like you wouldn't expect me to love because of my dry skin, but I've been going back to this because I've actually had a lot of like photograph moments in the past couple of months where I've had to renew my license, I'm going to renew my passport, I did my Sigma brush set, I needed a nice headshot. I like to call this my special occasion foundation. And if anybody ever asks me for the best matte recommendation for foundation, it's always the NARS Soft Matte for me. So this I've been going back to, but what I love is that you can actually customize the coverage of this with your other products. So this is super, super full on its own and it's super, super matte. So I actually mix in like a couple tiny drops of liquid highlighter and it brings it to that, that perfect like airbrushed but still human finish. Otherwise, you're going to look like a porcelain doll, which some people love. And I think that's actually kind of coming back. Um, but this is absolutely amazing for photographs. So if I were to go to any special occasion where I'm getting photographed, I'm wearing this and I can customize it depending on like how full coverage and how matte I want to be. But if you're looking for a really great photographable foundation, this is it. When I'm not wearing foundation, I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer usually or no makeup at all. But when I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer, I have two that I've been going back and forth between. They're both really good. It's hard to pick a favorite. I have the Rare Beauty and I have the Say Slip Tint. Both of these have SPF. I think the Say Slip Tint has more SPF but the Rare Beauty has a better shade range. This one's a little bit more liquidy. This one's a bit a bit more foundation-y, so it's a little easier to kind of work with. Um, but this one's more makeup-y, and this one's more skin y But again, now's the time to pick up these expensive base products. And also, I do think it's important to incorporate SPF into your makeup routine if you can, and these are a great way to do that. 2022 has been another year of blush. I feel like 2021 was blush. So is 2022. We all know that there's a thousand blush products on the market, but I did narrow it down to two favorites and it was really hard for me to do that. This is going to come as no shock, I don't think, to anyone, but the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. I want to go down a rabbit hole and just tell you like everything I love from Rare Beauty, but we could do a whole video on that. But if there's anything you have your eyes on, obviously now's the time and there's so many Rare Beauty products that I'm in love with, but I'm really trying to narrow things down. These I think are fairly priced on their own, like they're $20 I think, 20 something dollars. So they're already a decent price because they're going to last you forever, but then you get the extra discount so it's just so satisfying. And my favorite color lately is definitely this one, it's Happy and it's the pinkiest pink that there is. I have it on today. Um, I'm in love with this. I think it looks so good all year long too. Like in the spring, this was my favorite and then I wore it in the summer and I'm still wearing it. I might go a little darker with my color preferences in the winter. I like to go to like purpley and berry colors, but I'm still loving this happy blush and I actually have four different shades of this soft pinch blush. So definitely probably my number one favorite blush Ever. 
I don't know. I have a lot of blush favorites. And then I have another favorite and it's from Tower 28, which is fairly new to me, but I have two. I have a more natural one and then a more sun-kissed one. The natural one is in the shade Magic Hour. This is just such a beautiful, like, neutral blush shade. These are super blendable as well. You can just pick them up with, like, a little duo fiber brush or your finger, tap them on, and you're good to go. And then the other one is Happy Hour, and this one gives you, like, that sunburnt kind of look that I think is going to be a trend coming up real soon um, if it's not already but this one just makes you look like you got some sun but in the best way so love these and they do come in more colors the packaging snaps shut and it's so satisfying and it's also super sleek so it doesn't take up a ton of space in your collection and again with these I don't think they're too badly priced to begin with so why not get a little extra discount. I haven't fully been on my game with eyeshadow palette reviews. I'm reviewing like the top favorites that I'm getting but like for example I didn't pick up the new Anastasia one so I'm not sure if it's like a must-have right now but this one for me absolutely is so of course if you guys want more details I did so many reviews on this palette but the Huda Beauty Empowered palette is my Sephora palette recommendation of the year. Today I have the shade Encourage on my lid and I have a bunch of the darker brown shades all blended out and it's just so freaking magical. This palette is everything. You need it. Oh, see I told myself I wasn't gonna say you need it. If you think, if you think you like it, <laughs> get it. <laughs> it's so good. So I have a mascara favorite for anybody who's bougie and buys expensive mascara. I love drugstore mascara so this again is like it's kind of hard for me to be like go spend $20 on a mascara because my favorite mascara ever is the $9.99 uh, telescopic from L'Oreal telescopic in carbon black. It actually might be $11.99 now. So that's annoying, but I just went through mine, so I did start using the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. I picked this up from Ulta, <laughs> but it's available at Sephora, and I actually really, really love this. It's very lengthening. It has a really nice brush. I don't like thick, juicy brushes on my mascara. I like a thin, hard brush. So this is thinner. It's not super, super thin like the telescopic, but... It's really good. I like it. And I actually like a tubing mascara. It's just less messy when you take it off. I have it on my lower lashes. I don't know if you guys can see it. <laughs> but I have been wearing it pretty frequently. I did purchase this with my own money and I think it's worth it. So if you are looking for a high-end mascara, I have heard a lot of people talking about this. I think the hype is real. Not spons. Add to cart. I have two concealers. My number one concealer of the year and I don't know, maybe it's just me. I've heard some people don't like this. I am obsessed with this. I have dry skin. I don't love setting underneath my eyes. I don't have to set with this. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer in the shade Cotton Candy, I think. Yes, Cotton Candy. Ugh, what a dream. This concealer is my favorite concealer I think that I've ever tried, but I'm such a big fan of Huda Beauty concealers because I really liked the Overachiever concealer as well, the one with like the little metal tip. This is even better though. This is so, so good. So absolutely worth it. This is so chef's kiss. I'm obsessed. But if you're oily, maybe take my advice with a grain of salt. But if you are dry to normal, amazing. And then my one Sephora collection recommendation is actually their best skin ever concealer. I think this is more of like a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape concealer. I have mine in the shade 08Y, which is pretty close to my Cotton Candy in Huda Beauty. This is only $15, so to get this for 30% off is amazing. Hopefully they have some shades in stock, but if you're looking for a more affordable concealer from Sephora and you want to try something from the Sephora collection and get that 30% off, then this is my only recommendation because I actually don't have a lot from Sephora collection. I want to get their blush that everyone was talking about, but do I need more blush? No. 
they don't. Another pricier brand is Laura Mercier, and I have always been a fan of Laura Mercier products, specifically their powder products, but they recently launched a talc-free version of their setting powder. It's called the Ultra Blur. Mine is in translucent. Now, I haven't done all my research on talc, and obviously if talc is bad for you, I'm screwed with how often I use it in all of my makeup, but... If it's harmful for the environment, I think it's great to start like steering away from it. I don't know. You guys leave your talc knowledge down below. I don't know anything about it. I only hear things through the grapevine. Um, but if it's not good for you and you want a talc free option of the famous Laura Mercier powder, try this. I honestly think this is even a little bit less drying than the original. I don't know if that's intentional, but this is a little bit less drying and a little bit more finely milled, I think. Unless it's all in my head. I don't know. I like this better than the original, and I didn't think I would. I don't often set underneath my eyes, but I do like to take a very fine layer of powder and set my face when I'm going to go over cream with another powder. So like today, I put a little bit of this in my contour area. I'm talking minuscule amount just so I could go over with a little bit of powder contour because I'm like feeling insecure about my face. So this is really good for multiple reasons, but I just like to have a little bit of powder down before I try any other powder face products. Um, not, not so much to keep me matte because I don't really love being matte, but if I did, this would do that too. So I get very sucked into social media, I think like a lot of us do, and this highlighter has been floating around as like a rediscovery, like people are discovering this for the first time. So I've had this in my collection for a while, but now I'm rediscovering it. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. I have it on my nose today. Uh, I have a tiny bit like up here today. Um, it is just a really good shade for me with where my skin tone is at right now. I did not get a lot of sun this year and I haven't been self tanning as much and so when I am a bit more fair like I am now this is just such a beautiful highlight shade um, it also makes a really good like inner corner highlight I wanted to do that today and I didn't but benefit cookie stunning so I'm only gonna talk about one lip product because yeah there's absolutely a shit ton of lipsticks lip glosses whatever that you could pick up during the sale but I have a hard time like recommending them just because there are so many drugstore options but there is one high-end lip product that I cannot live without and that is my lip liner from Huda Beauty. I'm wearing it today under my gloss. I wear it almost every single day. It is the Muted Pink Lip Contour 2.0 liner. It just happens to be like the perfect pink for my skin tone. This is super long lasting. It's gonna last you all day long. It's also super smooth though, so you can wear it all over the lips kind of as a lipstick, which I very frequently do. So these are like the only high-end lip product that I can like really die hard recommend right now. Uh, they do come in like a ton of different shades. I wanna try, I think it's soft brown that I just picked up recently, and I wanna try that because um, I do love like a brown lip in the winter. There's one from Laura Mercier that I feel the same way about, but it's not available at Sephora, I don't think. Literally anything from Youth to the People, but I have written down my top two Youth to the People products that I actually, they're empties for me, so I don't have them in front of me. One is the Mandelic Acid Superfood Toner. Beautiful Mandelic Acid, my skin, they belong together. So the Mandelic Acid Toner is probably the fav my favorite toner that I've ever used. And then a really bougie product that's like not a necessity, but it makes me feel so good and my skin loves is the Youth to the People Adaptogen Mist, Skincare Mist, which... I'm in love with that product, but it's so expensive. <laughs> it's so expensive that I have not even quite decided fully if I'm purchasing it during the sale because I think it's $42 when it's not on sale, which I think is so high for a mist, but it's so good and it's such a good like easy way to apply skincare through a skincare mist, but like particularly in the summer, that product saved me. Like I would get out of the shower and I would just mist my face before applying any skincare. And sometimes I would just mist my face with that. 
beautiful beautiful product just wish it was like ten dollars cheaper <laughs> now there might be more products that i'm like just letting slip through my brain but i wanted to just recommend my top go-to favorites that i've been loving because again there are so many alternatives out there but if you're like me and you're always looking for an excuse to add something to your cart then hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you enjoy Sephora content in general I really do because I've been shopping there a lot um, so let me know if you want to see a haul after I purchase during this sale I could definitely do that and a lot of the times it's more reasonable than like what's actually in my cart <laughs> that video is coming soon if you guys want to see what's in my cart I'm gonna be filming that momentarily so hopefully they go up around the same time and you guys can see what I have on my wish list for this sale um, which will include more of like the fun sets and stuff that are available but i hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my recommendations but yeah that is it for this video stay tuned for more sephora savings event content and follow me on my other social media if you want to stay up to date with me between uploads and hopefully i will see you guys very very soon in my next one bye guys